Hello, welcome to the next video. Let's just continue right with uh, our chapter 20. So if I go back to our handout here, we're going to look at our next slide, which um, talks about the different thicknesses of each chamber. Now, this is a, a neat little trick to be able to tell on a heart that you're unfamiliar with where each of our chambers are. So is it the right atrium, the left atrium, you know, the right ventricle, left ventricle? Uh, it says the thickness of our myocardium varies according to the function of the chamber. So the atria are really thin walled and uh, they don't need to be thick. They don't need to have a lot of muscle because they're only pumping blood right to the ventricles. So if we are only pumping blood to the ventricles, you know, right here, it's pumping this far and it's pumping this far. So we don't need a thick myocardium to pump blood to the ventricles. So our atria are very thin walled. The ventricles, on the other hand, are much thicker and stronger. But if you look at this, it says the right ventricle is going to pump blood to the lungs, remember. The left ventricle is going to pump blood to the entire body. So if we look at our diagram again, the right uh, ventricle is pumping blood to our lungs. So, you know, it's going from our heart out to our lungs. So, I don't know, it's pumping blood this far, maybe. The left ventricle, on the other hand, is pumping blood to your entire body, all the way down to your tippy toes. So, the left ventricle is going to be thicker than the right ventricle. And that's what this is showing you. On the picture here, you can see that the left ventricle is much thicker than the right ventricle. It's about at least twice to three times as thick. And that's because the left ventricle has to pump blood all through your body, not just to um, uh, you know an area close by, but all the way down to your tippy toes. So this is a handy way to figure out what part of the heart you're looking at, especially in lab, because if you find the thickest part of the heart, it's always the left ventricle. So if you find the left ventricle, then you can move and navigate around the heart and find the atria and the right ventricle and so on. Now, I mentioned that we have valves in between those chambers. We have four chambers and we actually have four valves. The valves are going to prevent blood from backtracking and going back the way it came. And it's also going to prevent blood from moving on until we want it to do that. All right. And uh, if you look at the next slide here, you can see that we have four valves. And uh, they are reinforced by connective tissue rings that um, merge with the myocardium. And uh, they create this very strong structure that uh, can you know, pump blood for 80, 90 years, hopefully. Um, this fibrous skeleton that surrounds the Valves also uh, can help conduct electricity. Later on in this chapter, we'll talk about the conduction system of the heart and how we move electricity through the heart. Well, this connective tissue surrounding our valves helps propagate those signals properly. Now, if you look at this, we've got four valves. We have two valves that are called atrioventricular valves. Atrioventricular, they're between the atria and the ventricles. And then we've got two valves called semilunar valves. And so just to kind of uh, reinforce this a little bit, atrioventricular valves are going to be between the atria and the ventricles. The valves leading 
out of the heart are called semilunar valves. So we have one on the right side and one on the left side. So we have two different types of valves, but we have four valves. So we have four chambers, four valves. One, uh, one valve for ex exiting each chamber. That's a way to think about it. Okay, so uh, these valves are going to allow blood to flow to different areas of the heart or to flow out of the heart. Let's look at the atrioventricular valves first. The atrioventricular valves uh, are known as the bicuspid valve and the tricuspid valve because they have these flaps that are called cusps. And these flappy cusps are going to close and open to allow blood flow. So it says the AV or atrioventricular valves allow blood to flow from the atria into the ventricles. Now on the right side we have the tricuspid valve and on the left side we have the bicuspid valve. Um, so it says these valves open due to pressure. So when the atrial pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure, blood's going to go through this valve. Um, so it says this occurs when our ventricles are relaxed. Now remember we've got these little strings attached to the valves called chordae tendinae. They have nothing to do with these valves opening. What happens is the valve opens due to pressure. So if I need to open this valve, see this valve right here, this valve right here is our tricuspid. This valve right here on the left side is our bicuspid. So remember, you try it before you buy it. Blood flows through the tricuspid before it uh, uh, goes through the bicuspid. But these atrioventricular valves, what happens is we build up pressure in the uh, right atrium. The pressure is higher in the atrium than in the ventricle. So this valve just opens due to blood pressure and blood flows into the ventricles. So it happens on both sides. They open because of pressure. Nothing pulls it open. Nothing tugs it open. It's just opening because of pressure. So once there's higher pressure in the atria than in the ventricles, the blood flows through the valve. All right? Now, what's interesting is that these valves are going to close. So. Once the pressure in the atria goes down, the valve snaps shut. And those chordae tendinae are attached to endocardial muscles called um, uh, trabeculae carnae. And those uh, papillary muscles that are part of the trabeculae carnae pull on the uh, chordae tendinae and help keep the valve shut. So it, it actually doesn't shut the valve either, but the chordae tendinae pulls on the valve to keep it shut so it doesn't invert, it says. Um, so the AV, valve, AV valves close because of the lack of pressure. They snap shut. Blood is trapped in the ventricles. The chordae tendinae pull and keep that valve shut. So this is going to be happening on both sides. So. On the left side, our bicuspid's going to do this. On the right side, our tricuspid's going to do this. So now, for a brief moment, we don't have pressure, or the pressure's equal in both the atrium and the ventricle. That shuts the valve, and then as pressure builds up in the ventricle, the chordae tendinae pull on the um, valve and keep it shut. And now we're going to have a pressure difference between the ventricle and the vessels leading out of the heart. So that's where the blood is going to go uh, through our second set of valves. So the second set of valves are called semilunar valves. And these semilunar valves are going to exit 
and allow blood to leave the heart and either go to the lungs on the right side or go to the aorta on the left side. So these valves just open because of pressure. So the pressure inside the ventricle becomes great. It blows the valve open. Blood rushes through the semilunar valve. And then when the ventricles relax, blood tries to back up and then it snaps that semilunar valve closed. If you notice, the semilunar valves have these little cusps on them. They fill with blood and that helps them close and seal off. So this prevents blood from returning back into the ventricles. So those, the blood's gonna fill those cusps and cause the valves to tightly shut. It's pretty cool. So if we go to our picture here, uh, handout 20A, I've got a semilunar valve that leads out of the right side of the heart, right there. This is called the um, pulmonary semilunar valve, pulmonary semilunar valve. And then on the left side, I've got another semilunar valve that leads out to the aorta. And this semilunar valve is just called the aortic semilunar valve. And so um, each ventricle has a semilunar valve. All right. Now, um, blood due to the heart is going to circulate through our body. We really have, well, we actually have three types of blood circulation. We've got systemic circulation, and systemic circulation is the left side of the heart, the left ventricle pumping blood to your body. So all the parts of your body because it involves every system, we call it systematic. We also have pulmonary circulation. This is the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart's gonna pump blood to the lungs and it leads to the pulmonary trunk, which leads to the pulmonary arteries. So we call this the pulmonary circulation. So the left side of your heart is pumping blood systemically. The right side of the heart is pumping blood pulmon uh, through the pulmonary system. Now, um, we also have a coronary circulation. Coronary means heart, right? Pulmonary means lungs. Coronary means heart. So we've got blood that's being pumped to the heart itself because the heart's a muscle. It needs lots of oxygen and nutrients. And so we have to deliver blood to the heart itself, and that's through the coronary circulation. The coronary circulation has a bunch of blood vessels that all go to the same place. Blood vessels that go to the same place are called anastomoses. All right, so our coronary circulation is going to consist of the coronary arteries that branch and feed the heart blood itself. So um, there are four major coronary arteries, uh, and I have them listed in blue there. It says we have the circumflex branch, the anterior interventricular branch, the marginal branch, and the posterior interventricular branch. These are your four coronary arteries, and they are anastomoses. They go to the same place. So if you look at like the circumflex branch, it says it feeds the left and right, uh, left and, uh, atrium and left ventricle. The anterior or front interventricular artery supplies the ventricles. The right uh, marginal branch is going to supply the right ventricle as well. And the posterior interventricular branch is going to, again, supply blood to um, both ventricles. Now, this is kind of a fail-safe situation because if one of these is not working properly, we've got an alternate route. It's kind of like a detour. So um, blood can still make it to where it needs to go, even if some of these um, blood vessels are compromised, which happens during coronary artery disease, right? So coronary artery disease, the uh, 
the arteries, one of these four or more than one of these four become blocked due to fatty plaque buildup. And uh, a person may not realize it for quite a while because these detours allow blood to still get to where it's needed. Um, when these become plugged or we get a blood clot in there or a fatty buildup that collapses the vessel, that's when we can have a heart attack. A heart attack is when um, the heart's not getting enough blood. And so parts of the heart tissue die because they're not getting the, the nutrients that they need. You've probably also heard of this because of uh, uh, open heart surgery. So um, if you have a bypass surgery, what they're going to do is they're going to um, bypass a blockage in one of these four or more than one of these four arteries. So you can have a single bypass. That would be where one is fixed, double bypass, triple bypass, or if all four of them need help, it's a quadruple bypass. And so uh, these coronary arteries uh, may become plugged, clogged with uh, a blood clot or a, um, a fatty plaque buildup, and that's when you have uh, a situation where you need a bypass surgery. Now, there are also coronary veins, and these coronary veins collect blood that the heart uses because the heart's a muscle, so it's going to burn oxygen and uh, make lots of energy through um, ATP and uh, through uh, cellular respiration. And so this, the coronary veins are going to collect the deoxygenated blood and take it back to the right atrium. So we actually have three... Um, blood vessels that are going to lead blood back to the heart. So I mentioned two of them. We've got the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, but it is worth noting that we've got a coronary blood vessel called the coronary sinus that also is going to deliver blood back to the right atrium, and that's coming from the heart. So this coronary sinus is going to be the third vessel that brings blood back to our heart. All right. So it says that here, the coronary sinus empties into the right atrium. So we really have three um, vessels that are going to carry blood into our um, right atrium. Okay, so this kind of wraps up handout 20a um, so we need to know our blood flow through the chambers we need to know blood flow through the valves and how the valves work then we need to know the three types of circulation so systemic pulmonary and coronary and we need to uh, be able to explain how the blood is circulating through the body so this concludes our handout 20A, and we'll move on to our next handout here, I believe, in our third video. So take care.